Welcome to the Market Front Lines. I'm Lindsay Melchek. Some gold will never see the light of day until now. Resolve Technologies is changing the game, turning material miners once ignored into profitable ounces. More gold, lower costs, fewer regulatory headaches, and a smarter way to investors to get that exposure that they have been wanting. And joining me right here in the studio is Dwayne Nelson, CEO of Resolve Technologies. Dwayne, it is so great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Oh, great. Thanks, Lindsay. It's great to be here. So right off the bat, I mean, I know there has been uh, a lot of changes over there, one of them being a name change. Now, this goes back quite a little bit, but uh, tell us, like, what's the name change about? Well, we were innovation mining, and because we're a technology company, it really wasn't appropriate to be classed as a miner. You know, technology is uh, is the real story here. So, you know, uh, we have no mining properties. You know, we're completely focused on the development of this um, new discovery, the technology uh, that unlocks, you know, so many new gold deposits globally. And it's not just gold. It's tailings. It's concentrates. It's... Uh, um, gold in in areas where you can't get a cyanide permit i mean the the existing cyanide market as we said is like two and a half billion dollars a year and we think the the unaddressed market could be significantly larger than that mm-hmm. yeah well i mean it's a good name that's for sure it's spelt quite creatively so we're going to give you that at the end of uh the, the conversation for sure but Dwayne, i want to start at the heart of it all and how does resolve actually get gold out of materials that could otherwise just be left behind? Well, it's hydrometallurgy, so the underlying science is the same as as cyanide. And 90% of the world's gold is produced using cyanide, which it simply dissolves the gold into aqueous solution, and it it changes it into an ion. Um, So dissolving the gold, and then it reports to carbon. You strip the gold from the carbon, and you have a doré bar. So... The science is almost identical, except ours is non-toxic versus the well-known toxicity of cyanide. So, uh, the same technology, same premise, same um, the same equipment. So the miners don't have to alter their existing operations in order to uh, uh, shift over to a non-toxic alternative. Well, I love that. That you know, you're coming up with something that the market just there, there, there's nothing else like it out there. So that is a great start right out of the gate here. My second question is to really push further with that cyanide. Now, cyanide restrictions they can hold up projects for years sometimes. So oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. how does Resolve help operators move faster and smoother through that permitting process? Well, the use of cyanide is is prohibited in many countries and states and provinces. And it's got the social license. It's very difficult to try to push on any community, especially downstream communities. And so anybody that can come up with a non-toxic alternative that can bypass these stringent prohibitions and um, the hurdles that are are necessary for a a mining company to use cyanide um, will change the way that, that gold is mined. And that's exactly what we've done is our discovery um, allows for the extraction of gold from the rock, whether it, it doesn't matter whether it's conventional heap leaching or vat leaching or CIL, CIP, wherever cyanide can be used to dissolve the gold, um, resolve would be applicable. So are we only talking about just gold or critical metals or how is that? Well, you know, originally uh, the entire focus was precious metals, which is predominantly is, is gold and silver. But, you know, in a whole series of new tests that we've done, we've identified that we can dissolve up to 30 of the other critical metals and uh, rare earth elements in it as well. That's not our focus, you know, and we still require research in that area. But just the fact that we can dissolve that many gets, really gets us a seat at the table of that, uh, that whole new burgeoning um, um, metals group. Absolutely. Well, we're seeing a lot in, in places like the Yukon right now where they are so stringent on environmental and cleanliness and safety and all the things. So how is that feedback coming back for you guys from places like the Yukon? Are you getting any feedback? Oh, yeah. It, but it's, it's not just the U.S. It's, it's global. It doesn't matter what country you're in. Um, they're all saying exactly the same thing. They're all singing from the same song sheet. You know, they're looking for clean, non-toxic, cost-effective alternatives. And, uh, you know, ours is provides the same essentially the same results in the same speed, same recoveries, and the same cost. 
as the existing Sinai. And so what's the biggest struggles you have right now with it all? Just validation. We're a new company. And, you know, um, sometimes things that sound too good to be true, you know, that, that's, that's a very difficult objection to overcome. And the only way you can overcome it is through strong partnerships, strong um, uh, test programs with well-respected labor global laboratories like ALS and SGS labs, um, and uh, doing large bulk scale tests. And that's what we've just finished is our first really true commercial scale bulk test that uh, demonstrates the, not just the viability, but the economic viability. And uh, we're very pleased with the results. So, Dwayne, I mean, shipping concentrates, it's very expensive, and the margins are already incredibly tight. So let's talk about this a little bit. How does your technology make operations leaner and still profitable? Well, you know, and, and the number one reason a lot of companies are producing concentrates is their inability to get a cyanide permit to begin with. So, um, And there's a lot of companies that are producing gravity concentrates and float concentrates that can't be addressed by cyanide. And so... Their, their only choices have been shipping them to smelters. And of course, yes, you've got the logistics, which is shipping to the ports, from the ports to the smelters. Uh, then you've got your smelter fees, the smelter charges. But um, you look at the penalties that some of these smelters are charging. It can be in excess of $1,000 a ton. And we've just completed a whole series of tests on not just um, sulfide-based float cons, sulfide-based uh, gravity concentrates, oxide gravity concentrates, and we're seeing recoveries of over 99% in less than 72 hours. So um, so now it's not just addressing the, the VAT leaching, heap leaching, CIL, CIP, but be able to offer the miners an on-site alternative to that costly smelting process that so many of them are fighting with right now. My goodness. I want to actually touch a little bit on the geopolitical side of things. Now, I know a lot of mining has a lot of pushback and, uh, you know, a lot of things going on geopolitically. How does that work for Resolve? Are you seeing any of that same heat from geopolitics like these mining companies do? You know, ours is uh, classified as a non-toxic um, substance. So it doesn't fall under the same toxic categories as cyanide does. So ours is more of an, falls under an industrial permitting rather than having to permit something that's, that's so toxic. So, um, but again, you know, globally, everybody is, is, is saying the same thing is that if we can get this mine into production without the typical, you know, three to five to seven year wait for a cyanide permit, uh, and use an industrial grade reagent that's offering the same cost and the same results. You know, where do we where do we sign? Mm -hmm. But the market that's the existing cyanide market that you know that's somewhere between two and a half to three billion dollars a year right now. But the areas such as tailings, concentrates, um, the geopolitically challenged uh, um, areas that can't get cyanide permits, we see that market, and a lot of research is now backing it up at, at significantly larger than the existing cyanide market. So our, our focus is not to replace cyanide, it's how, do, how can we unlock the value from so many of these um, resources um, that are basically locked up simply because of a, a geopolitical will or the, they're locked up in a, in a metallurgical complex that is not um, uh, effectively recovered using cyanide. Okay, fair enough, that makes sense. What about, you know, credits? I know that there's, you know, carbon credits that are out there. I know that there's government incentives for cleaner uses uh, in mining practices. Does your resolve, does that fall under anything like that? Is that a thing yet or is that still growing? No, it's not a thing. We're, we really don't save carbon yet. If you were to use it in something like in situ leaching, where you're seeing a significant 90% uh, potential reduction in carbon foot carbon footprint. Then obviously that's where some carbon credits could be. Uh, um, uh, but do you guys have your own of, sort of credit? No, no. Well, I think I might be on to something. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I have another question though. That sure. you know, mining companies they tend to attach investors only to one asset. So how does Resolve offer a more smarter, a more diversified way to play gold? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we've just actually completed an in internal report that um, addresses Resolve's ability to allow investors to invest in Resolve um, and still gain leverage to the price of gold without the typical geopolitical risk or, or dilutive risk or 
um, permit risk of, of the many, many mining assets that are out there. So, you know, when you invest in Resolve, we, we believe that there's um, significant leverage to the price of gold. Well, you're getting into something that there's really not a lot of competition. I mean, that's sort of a, that's, yeah. says it all right there. Yeah, that's right. Well, and historically, when you look back at when, you know, gold prices uh, and gold rushes were taking place, most of the money was made by the people selling the pots and the pans and the blue jeans. And of course. So we're, we're more on that industrial side than we are on the mining side. My goodness. Wow. Okay. So the industry, as we know, that's changing. And we also know that ore is becoming a lot more complex. We're seeing standards raise much, much higher. So the key to all of it is is flexibility. Yeah. And that is huge. So why is Resolve perfectly positioned for the long game through this? Well, most of the big discoveries, high-grade discoveries are, are gone. It's very rare you're seeing any type of a high-grade discovery. You know, the average gold grade produced today is under 1.4 grams per tonne. And so when you're, when you're talking about that low grade, your only cost-effective alternative comes through vat leaching or heap leaching or some type of hydrometallurgical recoveries, you know, where you don't have to go underground. You don't have to, um, you don't have the high cost of going underground or the high cost of fine grinding. And so uh, that's why we're seeing a 6.5% year-after-year growth in the sodium cyanide market is that the market is leaning in directly into the path of where we're going. Such an interesting story. I mean, I could sit here and talk to you about this for hours because it's just so insightful and so innovative. Yeah, it is. It's very disruptive, you know, disruptive to the industry. And, you know, um, just with disrupt with any, th- any type of a um, new disruptive technology, whether it's cell phones or personal computers or the Internet, you know, the adoption curve is lengthy. But um, one of the benefits that we have is that we're not here to change the world. We're just here to slowly replace something that the miners are used to using with the same properties, using the same equipment and the same infrastructure. So we're hoping that our adoption curve will be faster than the other similar disruptive technologies. Yeah, you know, I feel like you guys are going to be the new internet. Remember when the internet first started and everyone was like, no, this is never, this is just a fad. It's not. Yeah, I remember it well. Yeah. Resolve. That's who's next. I'm going to tell you that. This has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining us and come back soon. It's always great. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Again, that was Dwayne Nelson, CEO of Resolve Technologies, trading on the TSX under RZL and on the Frankfurt under S711. More gold from materials that was once ignored, faster permitting, lower costs, and a smarter way for investors to participate. I'm Lindsay Melchek with Apaton Media. This is the Market Frontlines Real Conversations Real operators, no spin. We'll see you next time.